Jesus says, very spiritual young man, but he just got hit by a right hand over the top. And he was praying for some answers that he didn't see another right hand. <laughs> Boxing at his oh. best, king of the ring. And once again, Davis comes with some really good shots in the ring and bringing up the paint. Both fighters are trying to stay busy. Catalina with that jab. Now Catalina is standing more straight up because he wants to take advantage of his size and the reach that he has on Davis. He's trying to do everything behind the jab and just came through for a jab and a left hook. And that right hand put in some damage. And it's got somebody moving backwards. Nice up jab by Catalina. Catalina just got stood straight up. <laughs> Both fighters have had their moments here in round number one. Nice overhand right that time by Catalina, and Catalina again with an overhand right. It got a lot of glove, but it had a big power on it. This young man out of Pittsburgh can really put it down. Oh, He's tried to shake the room with the right hand. Straight right hands. He says, I'm the real deal. Well, he's looking like the real deal tonight. What is Catalina trying to do right now? I think Catalina trying to find his range, take his time with the jab. Oh, good shot. I think those are the punches Catalina's looking for, those kind of shots like that. You've seen Catalina fight before, correct? No, this is my first time ever seeing him fight, but he's looking pretty good. Oh, good Elmer. shot. First time for seeing both fighters fight. Good enough, that is the bell for round number one. I'll tell you what, we have had not only good fights, but very well matched fights. And the following weekend after that will be the Golden Glove Finals in April. The preliminaries will be March 30th, quarters March 31st. But not a bad crowd on hand later for amateur boxing here. here. Right here at this venue. Right Seeing here. some of the very best fighters in the Midwest. Let's take a look at some of the action here in round number one. Charles, describe what you're seeing here. Oh, I see Catalina going around, trying to go around that glove and hit him with big, big looping right hand. Oh, yeah, Catalina just keeps throwing those looping right hands. I think he found a hole for it. Is Catalina trying to set a trap right now? Yeah, I, th I think he's trying to make him forget about the right, with the, with the right looping hand after the jab, so. Once Hopefully again, it's about that jab. Him. It's about getting in and out. Round number two of the scheduled three-round competition. Fifty-five pounds, one fifty-two weight class. Rich Catalina. Jamal Davis. Davis has to be very careful, keeping himself so wide open. But Catalina will pick and poke him to death. Catalina is 27 years old. He says the time is running out on him. He needs to turn pro to find out what he can do. I was talking to him prior to the fight. He told me that his girlfriend is going to be his manager. She's going to get him started. She's very successful in business. He wants to bring a big name back to boxing through in Pittsburgh. He was talking about Paul Spatafore, one of the great Fighters out of the area, but has unfortunately had a lot of problems with the police. And he says he's made a bad name for boxing for Pittsburgh fighters. I want to make Pittsburgh fighters good names. 
He says, I realize I'm coming into hostile territory. Uh -huh. That whole Pittsburgh Cleveland thing. He says, but I'm coming in here to win. And he wants that championship belt. And what's interesting about Catalina, he has the openings, but for some of the shots that he's throwing, you would think his punches would do a little bit more damage. Yeah, I would, but uh, Davis is taking them pretty good. Yeah, Davis has, but Davis' mouth is wide open now. He's He might be a little fatigued, and those body shots aren't helping the situation. Oh, oh, good shot from, good shot from Davis. Good shot from Davis. And the referee gives a standing eight count. And that's what happens when you're throwing shots and you get lazy. Right. It's a defense. Catalina has to fight his distance and keep Davis on the outside. He doesn't need to mix it up with him. He doesn't have to prove who's a stronger puncher. Catalina needs a box more. Take advantage of that size. There's no need to bend down all the time. Oh, man. Oh. Good round. Good round, for sure. Good round. We got one more fight coming up. It'll be our main event. And I'm looking forward to that one. And it'll be Omar Garcia against Armand Richards. Pittsburgh against Cleveland. 141 pound weight class. You can purchase these tickets from 12 rounds or less.com. Very simple. Well, Fredo did the right thing. Or less.com. Making sure that the safety of the boxers come first. For years and years. And just stop by and take a look at their website. And he's good at what he does. The photos to take a look at from your favorite fighters to your favorite event. The action is fast. The action is furious. There's that straight right hand at time by Davis. Again, I had Catalina saying, where am I for at least a second or two? And of course the referee, Wilfredo, did an outstanding job. Check and make sure both fighters had their mouthpiece in. Let's see what we have here. Oh, he's still in the air with that jab. Richie Catalina. He needs to throw a straight right cross instead of that overhand right. I think Catalina have a little bit more success. Instead of going on the outside of the guard of Davis. Oh. See what I'm saying? Yeah. See, once again, if he goes straight down the middle of that gloves, he'll have a little bit more success. Oh, good shot. There's the right hand. And he needs to be more active. He had Davis hurt for a second, but you can't sit there and admire your work. That's for the referee and for the crowd to do. Body shot. Wide left hand to the body. Another left hand to the body by Catalina. And there was that right hand, but it was so wide. And that right hand was telegraphed coming from so far. Catch and shoot is what Catalina should do. This corner is probably like, what are you waiting on? You just hurt the man. His hands are not coming back to his side. And that's what's hurting Catalina. Even though he's looking the, mo the more impressive in this fight, and at this time, it's what he's doing. He's got to follow that jab up with something. The placement of his punches aren't bad. It's the accuracy that I'm more concerned about. Yeah. Both fighters are tired. Even his corner is asking that he picks up the pace. He's had a home all day for that right hand. It's a matter of whether or not he wants to wing it 
or send it straight. He's pretty tall for a welterweight. But he's getting too close. Oh, man. Good exchange. In close quarters, exactly where Davis wants this. Oh, man. Good right hands. From kind of Great fight. And that was a good fight. The gentleman that wanted that all annoyed, that beatbox, uh, your CD is made, ready. Two yesterday. very good Next fighters. Song in two very good turns. Let's see what we got here. Once again, Catalina walking him down with the jab. And the jab started off everything. It's what he did with the jab, followed by the right hand. Going to the body. And he mixed up his punches extremely well. But you could tell that Davis was a little tired and exhausted, even though he did have yeah, some moments weird. here in round number three. Months, it was too much of Catalina putting that, sure. that yard stick on him, called the jab, the followed by the right hand. And he had no answer for it. But he had no answer because he was fatigued. I think we're going to take Catalina as the winner of this one. We'll find out. But look at there. TV 20's favorite is about to hand out some trophies. Will he be putting it on that young man? We'll find out in just a few moments. Two young fighters ready to do it. TV 20 does an outstanding job of showcasing amateur sports throughout the state and throughout the city. And one thing I have to say, under the leadership of Kathy Allen, and of course the mayor, sometimes putting the emphasis on the amateur sports can save so much and for people to do it. Now let's go up to our ring announcer, Paul Shield, to find out who's the winner. Paul? Boxing fans, uh, once again, outstanding boxing action. Please put your hands together for these two outstanding athletes. Boxing fans, after three action-packed rounds, your winner fights out of the red corner, Rich Cantalina! Rich Cantalina is your winner. Boxing fans, here to present the championship belt from TV20, cameraman Ed Malone. And our very own Ed Malone is there to put on the championship belt. Ed, of course. One of our champion videographers and a leader, morale leader over there at TV20. Oh, one down. of the nicest Man. people in the world. <laughs> Brother Malone, saying. congratulations. Yeah, say that well, and there he is. is. And I tell you what, young man, you yeah, might not know it, but you just touched hands with one of the best men walking hey, in the city of Cleveland. Hey, I'm Ronnie Duncan along with the one and only. Charles Conwell will be right back with much more boxing, including our main event. It is the King of the Ring, TV20. We are Cleveland. So they say it's a man's world? see anybody's name on it. While well, they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. We changed all that! Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Well, 
Well, here we're ready for our main event of the evening and the king of the ring competition. It has been a spirited one. I've been joined all throughout the night with Charles Conwell, the 2016 Olympian from Rio. And Charles, we want to thank you before we even end this thing for joining us. We've seen some good fights thus far, haven't we? Oh, yeah, man. He's been in some amazing fights. I'm just glad to be here to uh, show my face and show my support towards the uh, up-and-coming champions. All right, our final bout of the evening is in the 135-pound weight class. And these are some talented fighters. Now coming to the ring, Amon Richards, and he told me, he said, Ronnie, I am so excited to be fighting in the main event. That meant so much to him. Why does fighting in the main event mean so much to a fighter, Charles? Man, it's like you're the headline of the show. All eyes are on you. This is your show. This is what you always wanted to do. This is this is you always wanted to be. So you're uh, show your face as a champion. Omar Garcia will be the individual he's fighting. Omar Garcia comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Amon Richards comes from the Empire Boxing Club in Cleveland, Ohio. So it's another Cleveland-Pittsburgh battle. How real is that Pittsburgh-Cleveland fight? Man, I remember, I remember going to Pittsburgh and fighting some of the toughest fights in my uh, my career, in my amateur career. So I know this is going to be a good one. Well, we're going to find out how tough it really is. 141-pound weight class is this event. Of course, we've got fighters coming in at 139, 138. But it doesn't matter, 141 is the weight class, and as long as you don't tip the scale over 141, that's all that matters. There he is, Amon Richards, out of the Empire Boxing Club in Cleveland, Ohio. He was pumped, he was excited, because he wants to do all that he can do here in this event, knowing that he, all eyes are on him. He's closing out the show. Let's go up to Paul Schill, who has our fighters. The referee wants to make sure more lights are being shown before they continue with the fight. Referee Wilfredo wants more lights on. And so he's gonna have to talk to some of the officials to figure that out because they wanna make sure they can see everything and the fighters can see everything. This building, please report ringside the maintenance folks. We need the lights on. Once again, the boxing officials Thank you. who govern everything for this event. We want to make sure that the lights are proportioned correctly. What we'll do is that we'll take a break in the action. As a matter of fact, before we even take a break in the action, let's hear how this young man, and I speak of the one and only, talks about it. And I'm talking about Armand Richards, his thoughts on this fight and how he got ready and prepared for what he's going to do tonight. Armand, championship is tomorrow, 24 hours from now. You and I was talking. How much does this championship mean to you, King of the Ring Boxing Series? I mean, it means a lot to me, man, all the hard work, dedication, um, the diet and the weight, the weight cutting, you know, so all, I can't let all that hard work go to waste. You know, I made it this far, so, you know, I'm, you know, I ain't letting up. I'm pressing on the gas. When you talk about pressing on the gas, talk to me about the mere fact that this is a better boxing series because you guys get to be on TV. You guys get to be analyzed just like the pros, just like some of the top amateurs. How does a series like this, King of the Ring, get you prepared for the National Golden Gloves, for the Olympic trials, and et cetera? How does a series like this help a fighter like you? Well, it helped me by like staying, staying focused, not under pressure, not like under the bright lights or everybody, you know, tunnel vision, me staying focused, me focused on me. So when I get in that ring, I don't worry about the cameras or the audience. I just see me and you, so I stay focused at all times. Now let's go up to our ring announcer, Paul Schill, who has more on the particulars of this fight. Here we are, boxing fans. This is our final bout of the evening in the 152-pound division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He representing the Pittsburgh Boxing Club from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Please welcome Omar Garcia. And his opponent fights across the ring in the blue corner, representing the Empire Boxing Club from, from Cleveland, Ohio, is Armand Richards. All right, we've got a good one. Garcia and Richards 
Richards in the blue corner with the blue trunks with Cleveland. Right on the belt line in the white T-shirt. Taking on the young man with the red and green. Omar Garcia out of Pittsburgh Boxing Club. And this is going to be one of those fights that both young men are going to be bringing it. And Omar is bringing it, but so is Garcia. Well, the energy is high. And Wilfredo wants to make sure that both fighters settle down. You know, the adrenaline can be running extremely high in a situation like this. And one thing that Garcia wants to do in Richards is they want to take control, but you've got to be under control to do so. I can tell you right now, both of these guys came here to win tonight. They're punching in high value. It's got to be a better avenue to put a placement on your punches. It's a good fight. No one has taken over. Pretty even round thus far. Nice left hand that time by Richards. Mark Richards, and that was a slip. But look at Garcia, man. He popped right back up. Right. Nice short right hands by both fighters. In close. Garcia appears to be the bigger. Fighter. But it doesn't matter because energetic wise, Richards is on fire. Both fighters are punching wide. Very tough fight to score. Oh, yeah, real close round. This first round, real close. What's impressive about Riches is how